because you, you're playing a you're playing against a, a team who a week ago gave up 400 yards of offense to North Texas. You you would think that Oklahoma, based on what we know right now, no no. No, uh, no shot at all at North Texas in the Mean Green, but you would think Oklahoma is is capable of more than that. I mean, this is this is a game where where you look at Dylan Gabriel, very similar in the same way you look at at Brent Venables as Dylan Gabriel, the man we think he is. He's a sixty one percent pass completer. I'm mean, okay. I'm rounding up sixty point seven. But he's he's you know he's completed a high proficiency number of passes. He's taking care of the ball. He he's familiar in Jeff Lebby's offense. These are all things that we know, okay? But they're sub stories. He was brought here to win a Big 12 championship. He was brought here to try to lead his team back to the playoffs. So is he going to continue to be accurate on this level? And really, you can't say that Saturday's game is a Power 5 level because it's not. But he's playing for a Power 5 team. And now that he's graduated up, air quotes, with a Power 5 conference, can he still be at 61% or better on his pass completions? Can he still take care of the ball and have a high touchdown to interception ratio? And I've heard people talk about, you know, a local narrative here. I've, I've heard people talk on the radio. By the way, I'm back in Oklahoma for those of you that care about that. Back in time for the first game. Um, so I've been able to listen to local radio. And, and, and look, guys, I'm not the only one who knows football. And there's a, a lot of guys out there. You guys listening, many of you know more about football than I do. But I disagree with some of the local narratives that are going that, hey, this is, you go, you go out there, you run the ball, you get off the field, you stay healthy. You don't risk it. You don't show. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that line of thinking at all because everything's new. If this is year three of Jeff Levy, I'm more in line with that philosophy, that mindset. But this isn't year three of Jeff Levy. This is year one of Jeff Levy with a brand new quarterback with two or three new offensive linemen with, you know, you're, you're replacing your, your, your starting running back. Jeff Levy's going to have to take this offense on a test drive. You, you ever bought a new car, right? I mean, you, you buy a new car, you just don't drive it down the, the residential street at 25 miles an hour. You put that bad boy on the highway, right? You rev, you rev it up. You see what it's got. You play with all the bells and whistles. You flip, flip the lights. You do the wiper blades. You check the mirrors. Open up the glove box. I mean, you do everything. You look at every detail of that car before you invest in it. And maybe that's a little bit of a silly analogy, but that's, I mean, that's what Jeff Levy has to do. Because you've got this game, and then you've got Kent State, and then you're traveling to Nebraska. And when we learned at Nebraska, they're, they're still not a great team. They're, they're a solid team. They're not a great team. But they, they can be dangerous. And you don't want to wait till you get to that type of situation on the road against a classic rivalry opponent. That's not when you try to rev it up and see whether how it purrs at 85 miles an hour. So for the people out there thinking they're just going to be handoff left, handoff right, let's get Marcus Major 200 yards and throw three passes to Eric Gray and call it a day, that's not what's going to happen on Saturday. And that's honestly, that's one of the reasons why I like this point spread. I'm typically, I'm a guy who shies away from a, a, a high point spread. I mean, like, I think Oklahoma State tonight against Central Michigan is 22. And I'm taking the chip walls. I don't think they're going to win that game, but I think they lose it by, you know, I, I don't think they lose by more than three touchdowns. And, and but I, I like this point spread because I, I think if you're Jeff Levy, I mean, it's not just Dylan Gabriel. I mean, you, you got to see what's behind him, right? I mean, do you not? I mean, you you got to get Davis Bevel in there. You got to let him throw the ball. This, I mean, look, when you look at the top four on this depth chart, Dylan Gabriel has never thrown a pass for OU. De- Davis Bevel never thrown a pass for OU. General Booty never thrown a pass for OU. By the way, I think that may be the very first time I've actually ex- ever said General Booty on a podcast. But whatever, Nick Evers, freshman, 
Never thrown a pass for OU. So this idea that's out there that you're going to just kind of go out there and, and, and insert yourself and put your logo on the field and just overpower your opponent, it, it can't be that way. It, it just can't. You, you got to get Braden Willis down the seam. You got to get Theo Weiss deep. You've got to get Marvin Mims in, 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 the, in the zone. You got you got to see if your guys can do what you think they can do. You got nine offensive linemen. Do you really have the best five out there? I mean, you, you've got. I mean, he Jeff Levy cannot go out and be vanilla in this offense. He just can't. So what are you looking for? Well, I, as a fan, I, I this. I mean, in regards to who the quarterback is, and in regards to who the play caller is, you got to look. You got to play clean. I mean, don't don't no jumps, no false starts. Don't jump, don't jump. Wait for the wait for the wait for the count. Don't have any, you know. Don't don't have your quarterback thinking your receiver is doing an in when he's really doing an out, and then you throw the ball to the safety. I mean, you got to play clean. Show me you understand what Jeff Levy wants to do with your talents. Show me you understand what, what Bill Biedenboe is doing with you guys up front, your blocking schemes. I, I don't know that we should expect Dylan Gabriel to get sacked. Maybe hurried on a blitz or whatever. But I'm willing, to, I'm willing to bet if, if Dylan Gabriel gets sacked, it's not going to be because an offensive lineman got beat off the snap. It's going to be because an offensive lineman or a, a running back or an H-back, somebody blew their blocking assignment. So play clean. Show me you can play clean. And, and, and here's what Jeff Levy really wants. This is the second point of what you're looking for on this offense. You want them to find a rhythm. Dylan Gabriel has less than two years, or two, excuse me, has less than three seasons of experience as a quarterback. But he's already got over 8,000 yards. He's already got 70 touchdown passes. Can he get in a rhythm? Can, can he find a rhythm with Theo Weiss? Can he find a rhythm, I mean, even with your running backs, where how that handoff is, is taken care of? Can he find a rhythm there? Find a rhythm with this offense where it clicks. And and that because of that, you you can't Jeff Levy can't just go out and be vanilla. I, unfortunately for, for North uh, for, sorry I say North Texas, but unfortunately for UTEP, that means that they're they're gonna get the full force of Oklahoma's offense, at least through the first half. And I, I can honestly, I mean this is there's some fandom here, okay? But I can honestly see Oklahoma jumping out to like a 42 point first half, and then you put Bevel in, then you put General Booty in, then you go down. You you look at Tay Wee Walker. You look. I think we'll see Tay Wee Walker before then. But you look at Javante Barnes. You, you work your way down in that second half. Couple of key players that I think you got to look for um, on Saturday with this offense. Number one, Dylan Gabriel, um, w- for all the reasons we've mentioned. I mean, he, he's the new star of the show, right? You lose not one, but you lose two high caliber quarterbacks from this program, and you replace him with Dylan Gabriel, who, in, in his own right, is talented as as it gets. Um, he, he's he's on the spotlight now. This isn't the spring game. This isn't where you come in and say, well, I'm just still learning. I'm still trying to figure things out. No, it's, it's time. Things have to be figured out by now. You're the man. So I think Dylan Gabriel has to be, be a key player. And we had, we had a rule last year where quarterbacks couldn't be key players. But I think in this game, in this situation, in this moment, it has to be. Because the truth is that this, this team will go as far as Dylan Gabriel takes them offensively. I think Marcus Major is a key on Saturday. We know what Eric Gray can do, particularly in in the passing game. And Eric Gray is the starter, right? At that, at, at the number one is Eric Gray. Marcus Major's number two, and then you get into Tavi Walker or Javante Barnes. 
But there's been too much talk about Marcus Major just for him to be a guy who comes in and, and carries the ball three or four times in a game. I expect his workload to be substantial. Should be double-digit carries. Six foot 220, I mean, and the guy can run. I mean, that's the Florida Gators. He's got power. Ask that kid from Texas Tech last year. He just got his head taken off trying to tackle him. I mean, I'm a Marcus Major fan because I'm a fan of all the, the prep athletes from the state of Oklahoma, particularly those that are from the Oklahoma City metro area. But this is a crucial moment for Marcus Major. I mean, he's a redshirt junior. Technically, he has two years left. He, he This is the time. It's put up or shut up time for Marcus Major. And when you need that tough yard, you know, it, it's, it's third and one from your own 47. You're in no man's land. I don't think Eric Gray is your answer there at 5'10". You want the six-foot guy. You want the 220-pound guy. So I think Marcus Major, watching what he does and how he fits in this offense, I'm expecting a big day from Marcus Major. And then I, I think Marvin Mims is, is the other guy. And I know that's kind of cliche right there with Marvin Mims because I've said the top, I said the quarterback, I said one of the top running backs, and now I'm going with the top receiver. And I really want to go with Theo Weiss because of, of the injury and being back, you know, going in the portal, coming out of the portal. Um, but I think I think you have to go with Marvin Mims here. In the slot, and and the reason why I think you have to go with Marvin Mims is because he was underused in 2021. You know it, I know it, Lincoln Riley knows it, Marvin Mims knows it. And after all the talk of, yeah, I wasn't going to stay if Lincoln Riley stayed and all this stuff, okay, show us why you feel like you were underused. Show us, prove us right, the fan base who thought you were underused. So I think... We know who Marvin Mims is. We know what the expectations are. And this should be a career year. This should be a, a third-year C.D. Lamb type year for Marvin Mims. And we'll know. We'll know on Saturday. We'll know by halftime. Oh, this is why Lincoln Riley didn't use him as much. Or, dang, what was Lincoln Riley thinking limiting the number of touches this guy got last year? And again, the fandom part of me, I, I think that's, you know, look, that's, I think that's what we'll be at the ladder. Like, crap, Lincoln Riley, what were you doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, you were going to USC and, and you wanted you wanted Mario Williams to come with you. Oh, okay, that makes sense now. I think that's what.